Hey everyone, so I figured I would do a continuation on my perm type video, and this will supplement our lesson on the perm chapter. So basically when I covered the types of perms, I know that it was a lot to take in, and that's why back in the day I did some videos on specific types of perms and, you know, the, the use for them. So I know that I covered the acid perms in a very vague term, so I figured I would go in there and talk a little bit about uh, the endothermic perm or the perms that need heat. If you remember my little mnemonic device to remember that, exo own heat, endo need heat. That's how you remember it. So one of the biggest companies that does perms is Zotos. And again, I am not you know, saying that you need to use Zotos. I'm not endorsing this product. I'm just talking about the most commonly used product in the market. They typically own a majority of the perming chemicals. And I know that a lot of the big brands like uh, Joico is another brand that they actually make um, the exact same products. This is a different label and they charge more money. So I wanna help you all save some money if you go to uh, Sally Beauty Supply or any beauty supplier that carries, and I always say support your local mom and pop beauty suppliers. Um, they make Harry Zotos, it's the most commonly used uh, perm in the market. You'll find it globally everywhere. And using a, a similar product is good because you have consistency, you know what's in there, you know what to expect. Where perms will differ across the line will be in pH, but you gotta remember that in order for a perm to be acid, the one text that we use, which is my lady, and there's another book out there, but a lot of them agree that acid perms are between 4.5 and 7.0. Basically, right when you get to neutral and just under, and that's the acid range. Anything over a 7.0 is automatically alkaline. So I did not talk that much about low pH waves because they are typically not uh, talked about as much in the market. They're pretty much just a type of acid perm. I know the book uh, talks about low pH waves containing sulfates and bisulfates instead of ATG, but I have not found a perm on the market that does that yet. I might consider actually patenting one of those and making one of those. But basically, uh, they're using a different type of uh, alkalizer, or an alkalizer, sorry, a perming ingredient instead of ammonium thioglycolate. What I did find though is that I found three types of uh, endothermic perms and they are warm and gentle, medium, um, and the other two are soft. I found that these two, they, uh, they both say the same ingredients. I think that one is marketed towards color hair up to 20 volume and the rest of it is, uh, is normal. The other one I found was the warm and gentle and that says it does, um, it's an extra body acid perm for resistant fine or gray hair. This is gonna be usually um, the type of perm that you wanna use for someone who has really gray hair. I do not guarantee that this will come out perfect because you gotta remember that if you are using a low pH, like all of these, use a pH of 6.7. Hair is normally 4.5 to 5.5. So even though you're going from a five to a six, does not seem like that much. Know that when you go one up on the pH scale, it's 10 times stronger. If you're going from a four to a six, 10 times 10, 100 times stronger, and so on and so forth. So that really puts a lot of uh, this chemistry in perspective. It might not seem like a big difference, but it's actually very huge. So these perms are special in that they all contain the same components. You have your waving lotion, you have your activator that goes into your waving lotion, and you have your neutralizer, and this perm is special because it includes a thermalizer for the neutralizer. So you put this in there, the neutralizer gets nice and hot, and then you put it on the, uh, the freshly towel blotted hair, and it feels really nice for the client, because you gotta remember that when you're doing a perm, it is a very torturous procedure. You're shampooing the hair, sometimes the rods can be tight. You, the benefit of using the endothermic perm is that for a lot of elderly clients, you're gonna be uh, putting this uh, solution on them and putting them under the dryer and that feels nice and warm. And then when you rinse with warm water, you're gonna towel blot. You then can put them under the dryer to take out some of the moisture. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna put on the, uh, the neutralizer. And typically if I'm using a perm and it doesn't matter if it's this brand and there is no thermalizer, I just take the neutralizer and I put it in a bowl of warm water so it can just gently warm up. And that way it's not as much as a cold shock that you're putting this really cold liquid on a client who is just sitting under a warm dryer. So I like how this uh, one type of perm includes a thermalizer for the neutralizer. It really shows they care about client comfort. So uh, with this type of perm, know that it is not uh, damage free. If someone has bleached hair, this is probably not the product you wanna use for two different reasons. Number one, does not say that you can use it on bleached hair on the product. And number two, you are adding a dryer. And on bleached hair, if you add heat, 
know that bleached hair, which is already fragile, does not need to open up anymore. So then you can have hair that is ready that quick and then you miss that little window and then you have mush or what we call pocket curls where the perm rod comes right out with the hair attached to it and you just slip it in your pocket so the client doesn't see it. Um, here's a little fun fact. If you are in cosmetology school and you have an older teacher or you work at a salon and your mentor is a little bit older, ask her, she, him or her if she knows what a pocket curl is. I guarantee that they will know exactly what that is. Even hairdressers that were doing hair in the 80s and 90s when perms were still in style, they know what pocket curls are. So these are marketed as body waves. Um, this is an extra body wave and I looked at the ingredients and it does not contain uh, any bisulfates or any of that stuff. It contains uh, glycerol, thioglycolate, and um, ammonium hydroxide. These contain ammonium chloride, which is a different type of chemical, and I will cover that in a different video. Just know that they pretty much do the same thing except this one, where these two produce a softer curl. This one is gonna be more medium. It's gonna be a little bit stronger. Know that if you have a client who is doing a cold wave perm and you don't have a cold wave perm, do not think that you can get the same result using this as in a cold wave. Uh, using this instead of a cold wave, you cannot because the pH is a lot lower. A cold wave is a very strong pH. So what I would recommend is just go to your nearest beauty supplier and get the cold wave. So that way you can get a good firm curl. This produces more of a medium wave to a medium curl. This produces a very soft wave or curl depending on your wrapping method. So I'm going to be using all three of these products on different types of mannequins in a future video. I'm going to be doing the oval perm, which is just two perm rods. You make them work as one. Also know that if you use like, let's say, um, I'm trying to think, a purple rod, and I think underneath a purple rod is a white rod, no, or in layman's terms, if you have a rod that is three quarters of an inch, what you wanna do is use a size just below that. I think it would be a half an inch or so because you're gonna make that one size below that, um, it ends up becoming uh, the same as if you used a purple rod. I'm gonna see if I can rephrase that. Let's say these two are perm rods. Okay, this is one the biggest size. This is, I mean, this is the bigger size. This is the size below it. If I wrap this big uh, rod around it, because the chemicals and low pH that are used in here will make it be a softer curl, what's gonna happen is this rod that you are having, you're used to having a true to rod size is not gonna be true to rod. It's gonna look like it's one size larger. So what I do is I use a size smaller to make it come out like the rod you think it's gonna look like. So um, that's one of the uh, biggest drawbacks of this kind of perm is it's not true to rod size. It's, um, it's more usually uh, looser. It's great for natural curls. It's great for people that want to do modern perming techniques. I, uh, th this goes great, by the way, with flexi rods. The other thing that you want to know, too, is that you need a dryer. So if you don't have a dryer or a hood attachment, you can't just put this on and expect it to work. Heat makes this work because if you think about it, a pH of 6 is going to be fighting against your acid mantle where a pH of 9, the cold wave, just blows right through it. This you need the heat to open up the cuticle, allow the perm to go in, do its job, and then you have to then check the hair. So it becomes a little complicated. Even though some of these say that no test curl required, still do a test curl. I usually do it after five minutes and then every two minutes after, and then I make a note on the client card. Because every hair type will respond differently to this perm. This one says acid perm for normal hair, and this is acid perm for tinted hair. This is your body weight because it uses a stronger and different type of chemical. So I hope I cleared that up with the acid perms and the low pH waves. If y'all know of any uh, low pH waves that use um, sulfates, sulfites, or bisulfates, let me know because I've yet to find one on the market. I know that we kind of passed that one decade of when you know perms are really big, but they're coming back, so who knows? Um, maybe Zotus or another brand will come out with a bigger one. So that is it for this little segment on your um, endothermic perms. Know that you need a dryer. Know that they produce a very, uh, very soft curl or wave. They're ideal for doing body waves. They may not be ideal for doing uh, gray resistant hair. Typically you wanna go the cold wave for that. But if you have a client that's willing to let you experiment, um, try it out and see how it works. And uh, also before I go, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I also apologize if I have not been on. I, uh, I'm gonna make a whole video explaining my absence. It's been a crazy few months and I know I keep having a, having a little sabbaticals and a time away, but I'm trying to be more consistent. So I really appreciate um, all of y'all's patience.